Hello everyone, Victor is here, your guide to all things organic chemistry, and in this video I want to talk about the nomenclature of aldehydes and ketones. So first of all, let's talk about the differences between the aldehydes and ketones. Both functional groups contain the carbonyl, which is a carbon-oxygen double bond. Ketones have two other alkyl groups sitting on the carbonyls. Aldehydes, however, have only one alkyl group on them, and the other group is going to be hydrogen. If you like, you can always use a mnemonic device to remember that aldehyde has an H. And while these two functional groups look very similar to each other, they are in fact different. Aldehydes exhibit reactivity that is not accessible to ketones, so by definition that makes them different functional groups. But we are not here to talk about the chemistry of aldehydes and ketones, we are talking about their nomenclature. So let's start by looking at ketones. When naming ketones, we are going to be using the ending on, which will add to the end of our molecule. So, for instance, in this molecule we are going to be calling it propanone, or acetone if you like to know the common name for it, which you'll see quite often in your course. Now, this one is a very simple molecule. What we have something a little bit more complex, like this one. In this case we have a carbonyl, and we also have a substituent, which is a methyl group in this case. Since our carbonyl is a functional group, we are going to make sure that we are numbering our molecule in such a way as to give the lowest possible numbers to our functional group and our substituents. Which means that in this case we are going to be numbering our molecule from right to left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. Another thing to keep in mind is like in the case with all other functional groups, we'll need to specify where exactly it is in the molecule when it comes to the positioning of our carbonyl. So when I put my name together, we'll say that this is a 4-methylpropane to own, and here the locant 2 specifies the position of the carbon with the carbonyl. Now, when it comes to the aldehydes, the ending that we are going to be using for those is going to be all. So a 2-carbon aldehyde would be a simple ethanol. It is also known as acetaldehyde by its common name. Another common name you might want to remember is formaldehyde, which is the simplest aldehyde. The IUPAC name for it is going to be methanol, but hardly anyone ever calls it this way. And just like with ketones, we'll have to number our molecule to give the lowest possible numbers to the carbonyl of the aldehyde. But here is the catch. The aldehyde is always going to be at the end of our chain, so this means that you don't need to say that it is the position number one, it is always going to be assumed. So, for instance, in this molecule, we are going to call that as 2-ethyl-3-methyl-pentanol. I don't have to specify where my aldehyde is, because it is always going to be at the carbon number one. Keep in mind, though, since our aldehyde is a functional group, you will have to find the longest continuous chain containing that aldehyde functional group, even if that means that you are going to pick the shorter chain in the molecule overall. Like, for instance, in this molecule, technically the longest chain is 6 carbons long, but that chain doesn't have the aldehyde, so that doesn't count, and the longest chain with the aldehyde functional group is only going to be 5 carbons long. Another common mistake I see a lot of students make is not counting the carbon of the aldehyde functional group as a part of the chain itself. The carbon of the aldehyde is going to be the carbon number 1, it is part of the chain. Always remember that and don't just discard that. Now, how are we going to deal with a molecule where we have an aldehyde and a ketone functional group together? Um, quite easily, actually. The aldehydes have higher priority, so when you're numbering your molecule, you'll have to start with the aldehyde regardless. And also the ketone in this case will be noted using the prefix form rather than the ending or suffix form. The prefix form for the carbonyl is oxo, and it is going to be the same prefix for both aldehyde and a ketone in case when you need to use prefix form for the aldehyde. And uh, the oxo prefix here is going to follow all the same rules as any other substituent that you might have, which does include the alphabetization as well. So, for instance, in these two molecules, the one on the left is going to be 4-oxopentanol, and the one on the right is going to be 2-ethyl-4-methyl-3-oxopentanol. 
So notice how I alphabetize everything, including my oxo prefix. Now, in terms of priority, aldehydes and ketones are above alcohols and pi bonds. So if your molecule has all of the above, you'll still have to prioritize the aldehyde or a ketone for the purposes of the numbering. So for instance, over here, I have 4-hydroxy-3,3-dimethylpentane-2-ohn, and I have prioritized my carbonyl over the alcohol for the purposes of the nomenclature for the purposes of the numbering and what I'm going to put as the ending here. And here I'm using hydroxy uh, that is going to be a prefix form for the OH. Now, when it comes to the nomenclature of the cyclic aldehydes and ketones, there is a huge difference on how we are going to be approaching those. With ketones, it's pretty straightforward. We number the cycle from the carbon where the ketone is located to give the lowest possible locons to the rest of the substituents or maybe other functional groups if we have any. We are going to alphabetize everything and then we are going to put it all together. So, for instance, here I have 2,2-dimethylcyclohexanone, so nothing unexpected. With the aldehyde, though, uh, it's a little bit different. The thing is, it is impossible to have the aldehyde directly be a part of the ring, and it can only sit on the ring but never be a part of the ring itself. And if we do not have any additional carbons between our aldehyde functional group and the cycle that it is sitting on, then in that case we can use a special style of nomenclature where we are going to be using carbaldehyde as the ending. So, for instance, this molecule over here would be called cyclohexane carbaldehyde. And that's all you got to know about the nomenclature of aldehydes and ketones. Of course, when it comes to organic chemistry, practice makes it perfect. So make sure you practice nomenclature on a regular basis so you don't get caught off guard during the test, as some professors love testing for nomenclature. Thank you for watching. I want to especially thank all Organic Chemistry Tutor members for your support and encouragement. Leave me your questions and feedback in the comments below. Hit the like button if you learned something new today and want to help promote this video so more students can see it. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.